Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits in Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and we're here at Lofty Pursuits and we make hard candy. And what we've been working on is recreating the memory of these Altoid Sours, the tangerine variety which seems to have been the most popular. They were discontinued around 2010 and I've never actually tried these. So I'm doing a clean room development of a candy to bring back the memory of Altoid Sours. Obviously it's not gonna be identical. But we're hoping to be close and this is part two of the video. So if you watched last week's video, you already knew this. We had a bit of an equipment failure with our panning machine. Now the panning machine is sort of like a cement mixer for candy. It tumbles the candy and it's eventually gonna let us apply a wax and an acid coat to the candy. And it was pretty spectacular, but it actually taught us a lot of things. One, the bowl's strong enough. It bounced off both the table and the floor and it didn't dent. Two, those binder clips, they're strong enough too. They didn't move, basically. And the thing stayed together solidly through the entire bouncing process, far outside of the original engineering specs. We also got lots of comments, and there were good guesses about what could have gone wrong. Some people thought the shaft unscrewed, and actually the opposite of that happened, but we'll get to that in a minute. The shaft can't unscrew because the direction the bowl is spinning actually tightens the screw every time. They thought the load was too heavy, and it's not. We were able to calculate that before we built anything, but we didn't calculate the mass. And what we were dealing with was torque and not weight. What I mean is, when the bowl was spinning with the weight in it, every time it spun, the only thing it was applying force to were the threads on the bolt that connected to the back of the uh, bowl. And that metal was too soft, and it stripped all the threads. So that shaft that goes into the KitchenAid came off entirely. So we had to rebuild it, and that was actually pretty easy. We re-threaded the hole, bigger diameter, there was enough metal for that. But then we added a plate to the back of it. This plate here distributes the force, so now it has a greater mechanical advantage, so it's not like three quarters of an inch in diameter, it's whatever this is in diameter. And we pinned this in place. So this shaft now is recessed into this aluminum, aluminum plate, and there are holes drilled that went halfway through the shaft and halfway through the plate. I don't know if you can see it here. But those holes then have a threaded screw screwed into them. This is called pinning, and we pin this. So now there's a mechanical connection so this can't spin on its own, so the uh, screw that goes to the center of it can't get any torque applied to it. The torque will be applied to this aluminum plate, it'll be distributed over a much larger area, and it shouldn't tear out. We did a little bit of calculations and the force should take what we need at 25 pounds spinning at about five or 10 RP RPS, and uh, well, we'll see if it works. We did some test batches day before yesterday and it came out fine. I'm sorry I didn't videotape them, but we hit another problem, and that problem was wax application. So. We applied the wax to the outside, and we did it the way we saw people apply chocolate to a panning machine. Obviously, this is wrong, because the wax hardens almost immediately. We're using carnauba wax, which is the same wax that they used on the original Altoids candy, and when we poured it on, it hardened into lumps all over the candy. It was ugly, it was not pleasant to eat, but it did picks up the wax, and we were able to spread it out a little bit, and by spreading it out, we got maybe 10 or 15% of the batch with the acid coating on the outside, which was better than we were hoping, but not good enough to go into production, so we can't throw away 80% of the candy. What this means to me is that the wax has to be applied in a different manner. So the first thing we did was we tried to apply the wax hotter. We thought then it would be more liquid, it would take longer to solidify, and this would be better. I did not know you could burn the wax. This beautiful yellow wax became a dark brown and smelled funny when we were done. It did coat the candy well, but made it completely inedible. So we're gonna have to figure out a way to distribute the wax more evenly when the candy is spinning. And I think the way to do that is to aerate it. We're gonna have to spray it on some point, but we're gonna have to do hot spray of wax with food safe materials and equipment. Now, we got some ideas. I found an all aluminum oil sprayer, and if I can keep it hot enough and it doesn't clog the valves and we can eventually clean it, we'll be able to spray it on as it goes. But I also have a resource that recently opened up to me. We've been working with the Jelly Belly factory on their museum. They're putting a history of candy museum together at their factory in California, and I've been advising them on the type of equipment that we work on. 
Well, when I was talking to one of the vice presidents last week, I asked for a favor, and he's happy to let me talk to their head engineer. Now, their panning machines are cool. I got to see them once in New Jersey when they were at a factory being refinished. These things look like satellite dishes. They're huge. So I have a lot of hope that when I meet with this engineer on the phone or over some sort of chat, he's going to give me tips of how to apply the wax properly because I've got an expert in the field to see and an expert that's independent of anything else. Failing that, I'm going to have to build a spraying system, and that could be an entirely different video. You guys gave us so much useful information in these comments, and I've been processing it, and I have been working on a chart sorting everything out. But you gave us something else. Last video, I asked for people to submit art for the cans, and I thought it was just throwing this out here, thinking that, you know, maybe I get some good art. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Now, some of you asked for direction, and I specifically didn't give direction. That was in my intent. You see, I'm an artist myself, and I've given you direction, and you'll be able to draw something that I would draw, and that's not what I want. I want something out of left field, something cool. And I got this, as you can see. These things are amazing, and I'm so impressed. Actually, so much so, I'm already planning on making a print of all of these that's going to be framed and hung on my wall so that every combination of them, whether we use them or not, is on display. And I'm also going to make some test cans just for fun because you can make stickers one at a time. We haven't decided which one we're going to use because we haven't finished with the competition. The deadlines and everything are down in the description, so check it out. And I'm sure we'll have some good prizes, but frankly, I haven't had time to think about that. I've been working on making candy. We were also asked when this would ship. And you know what? We don't know. It's going to ship when it's ready. We're not going to get it too early. I can't see it going out any less than a month from now. Until we're convinced that we know we have a ship date, we're not going to put a pre-order up. So I don't really have an answer for you on that. When it's ready, it's ready. And um, we're going to do the best we can. I hope you can be patient for it. We're going to keep you updated with future videos. And of course... The updates are constant in our podcast, which is also called Lofty Pursuits. We just posted episode number 88 on Tuesday, and, you know, you can listen through them and see what we talk about. I think it's interesting. This is something I count as a special project. It's not a normal candy project. It takes a lot more effort, and it might not work. But I'm allowed to do this because of my support from my Patreon subscribers. They let me do my podcast and odd projects like this. So if you have a desire to support us, please become a Patreon subscriber, and we'll appreciate it, or don't. And we still appreciate you, because, you know, you're getting our candy and enjoying these videos. Because I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. And I thank all of you for however you let me do it. So we're going to continue this with the series going on. It's probably going to be two weeks before the next video in this series, but there'll be another candy video next week. If you haven't subscribed, please click subscribe and ring the alerts bell, because otherwise you won't find out when this candy is coming. If you really want to know when this candy is coming, the first notice goes out by email, and you can go to our website, www.pd.net, and sign up for our email list. And if you're on our email list, you're the first one out. I have a funny feeling that our first batch of these, possibly our only batch, will sell out quickly, so I'd advise that if you're actually interested in getting this candy. And um, please join that. And while you're there, look at our other candies because we have a lot of other candies you might enjoy. And like I said, it's going to be at least a month and possibly two or more before this is ready. So you probably don't want to hold out till that's ready if you want to try some of our other candies. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your business. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, listen to our podcast. And thanks again to our Patreon subscribers for making this video possible.